uh, as a guest poster was um, he'd been at my house and I'd been blithering on about the Kursk. It was like the Russian submarine that had sunk, you know, I think back in 1999, 1998 or 99. And um, it, it, it was an obsession of mine for years. And I was just blithering on about it uh, to her. And because like, I'm kind of like a Cold War nerd. And so she invited me to like write a post about it, uh, which I did. And it was great fun. I could like pull in artworks and, and I, I researched like crazy. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm not a journalist. I'm not interested in report, re- reportage. That, that doesn't matter to me. Uh, but I just kind of thought she asked me to guest more often. And I, I, rep- I remember reporting on the papal elections. Because, of course, I'm fascinated with the Vatican. They're my mortal enemy. I hate them with passion. So, of course, I'm like, no, thy enemy. No, no, your enemy. Uh, so that, um, and eventually, you know, I would take, I would replace her um, when she'd take a holiday or something. And it just kind of snowballed. She, you know, just kind of asked me to join her. And, uh, you know, we would, you know, co blog. And, it was a riot. It really was. Like, I mean, most of the time I was just thinking of ways to make her laugh her head off, you know, when I post something. But it was also an opportunity to um, to actually showcase artists at that time who didn't have a big web presence as well. So it wasn't just our opinions. I, I wanted to you know, just add images of people, of, of people's work that, you know, you wouldn't have known about. Um, I'm going to ask one thing, hosts like Loop and Ariel. Um, could you put your mics back on? Because I don't feel like I'm in a conversation. I feel like I'm like. Thank you. Yes. Sure, no problem. I hate that. I, like, I'm like i talking into air and feeling like a freaking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. So, anyway. Yeah, like, you know, feel free to, to interrupt me to ask about something at any time. Otherwise, I will run out of gas so fast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not as bombastic as, as you think. Um, but So, I, I mean, I'm posting there. I'm posting other pe- people's work, which was so much fun. Um, and unlike, and, and this is really important, unlike uh, social media now, um, you didn't have an idea of your reach. You had no idea. You didn't trust your stats. They could be bots. So you didn't have an idea of like, unless people commented who they were um, and, or, or that it's not about the anonymity. It's more about the scale. I had no idea of the amount of people reading this. Like we were totally oblivious to, to that, which makes it so much fun. I mean, it's, it's a hoop because if no one's listening, you can really have a riot. And we did. <laughs> now, there was actually, it was like, I can joke about like the golden years of blogging, but there were, there was, um, there was several, um, you know, electronic publications, blogs that really mattered a lot to us, to both Sally and I. Uh, one was Jennifer McMacken, who, um, ran Simple Posy, which was a blog. I'm, I'm sure it's still archived out there. It was a blog where she'd ask a simple question every day. Very simple, which is much harder than it seems to come up with a simple question. And then mm. the Congress, and, and because Jennifer McMacken, like Sally McKay, is another person with a massive intellect. Um, to watch Sally, or to, yeah, to watch Sally, witness Sally and Jennifer, you know, in a conversation, actually in an argument, uh, oh. was kind of thrilling. I mean, they were so smart. It was called um, Simple Posy. Hi, yes. Lauren, it's Ariel. <laughs> Hi, Ariel. Okay, yeah. Okay, I'm going to try to find it and put some of these things into the chat so that people can yeah. uh, follow along. Okay. okay. So, Simple Posy, um, Jennifer Back, and, and of course, Patty Johnson of mm-hmm. Art M City. Um, like most of the people here should know who who, who she was. I mean, she's very, very active uh, as an art critic, as an art writer, and, you know, she had one of the earliest blogs that had a large audience. And, of course, Rhizome. And I have a lot of um, criticism 
for Rise Home at that time. Um, I really thought they were doing an appalling job, but you know, we can talk about that later. Um, so what else could I say about it? Anyway, I mean, the other thing was like the URL is still Sally McKay because we were too lazy to change it to add my name. So we just like added my, like we've never bothered, like who cares? Um, but the conversations, like people love the posts, like, you know, I'm, I, I could do a wonderfully decorative post. I can do, um, I really enjoy, you know, putting pictures up from, you know, artists I admire, but the actual action and all the fun was in the comments. And there were knockdown drag out fights happening constantly. Uh, it was kind of exhilarating to tell you the truth. And I, I, I think for some strange reason, a few weeks ago, I was like reading some of the threads because I think I was going to get rid of like all the dead links and, you know, dead YouTube um, things, everything that was unavailable and just, you know, took up space. And I was looking at those and it brought back to mind how the, you could be so engaged that like you're thinking about something for a full day. You're thinking about the arguments. You're thinking about, um, you know, responses that, you know, have some like merit to them and we well, don't do that in twitter like nobody does that on twitter <laughs> for the most part <laughs> who could be bothered um but so this was the, the the kind of discourse was so much different um and everyone loved it. i mean people were piling into those comments and one of the things um that made it wildly entertaining was of course tom moody and Tom Moody and Sally were friends. Uh, they're also friends um, with Patty Johnson. Right. And we spent a lot of time fighting with him and um my problem was that a lot of it he had to win every argument he had which is which he dominating an argument isn't the same as winning it's like you, you may think you won because you got the last word it's not the same thing as you know anyone else like taking your point to heart like it, it's it's totally it's it's just a, an exercise. And I, I thought he was a bully to tell you the truth. And, you know, in that way that bullies are defensive and carry with them this endless, to me, it got boring after a while. So I, I stopped engaging with him and, you know, um, but the other thing I had an issue with at that time was rhizome and what bothered me about Rhizome, though, it was the only game in town for finding out about you know, digital art, what was going on in net art. It, it was a resource in that way. But at that time, they were hell bent on creating a star system. They, they just, they, they wanted to anoint certain artists. Um, and that doesn't, that doesn't advance the cause, so to speak. I mean, it, you need a critical mass of people who are, making digital work who are exhibiting it and who are talking about it to make it interesting to really be adding to to a scene or you know to to a movement whatever so um my i had major issues with riso it was basically you know kind of the same people over and over that you know were were promoted and everything else so um i the mm -hmm. fact that there were other websites and blogs you know, pushing back against this and saying, hey, you should be looking at this person, you should be looking at that person, was really healthy. Yeah. Well, Cha, you you know, uh, you know Tom Moody really well. So what was your well, background with him? I wouldn't say really well. I okay. met him once in real life, um, which was very nice. Uh, it was funny. I never met him. For, I never met him in real life. And um, uh, everyone who had said he was like a, a lovely man, basically. Like he's like a, unfailingly polite, charming yeah. in that you know, southern way. He was a Texan, wasn't he? And yeah. um, 
So I never met him. No, we, it was all his online persona, which I just thought was awful. <laughs> Hmm. That's yeah, so funny. <laughs> it was so nice, all of those conversations that were going on, I, especially from, from my perspective, coming out of uh, studying in art school and, and being in like a community in art school and then leaving and then finding this other community online where there was lots of discussion going on. It was just like, it was, it was lovely. I mean, it was just, it was great. I agree. Totally mm -hmm. agree. It, it, and the, the idea of just being able to answer back and to have thoughtful, real, like, I mean, you know, to watch, you know, for Sally and, and Patty Johnson and um, Jennifer, like when they started, um, you know, a, a, a conversation, it was generally brilliant. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of wonderful to be able to be in the company of people that are so kind and smart and informed and well-read and just listen to it or just watch these, these things. I mean, that, that to me, like makes for a great life, makes for a very stimulating life. Even if you never feel like you have to add anything or just feel you're just incapable of keeping up with them. Um, it, it, it's still marvelous. Hmm. Yeah, it just, it just really felt like, I mean, it made me feel more connected to like the art world at large. I felt like I was, I was participating directly, um, which, which was a, a, a completely new experience, um, you know, to have it mediated that way, but it was, it was lovely. And, and your comment about, um, you know, going off with the rest of your day and then still, you know, thinking about the response to this question or, or et cetera, et cetera. I absolutely understand that. That, and that was a, excuse me, I've got a. You've got feedback. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting out on my stairs here and I've got the, the street right next to me, but, but the real, um, I've lost my, I lost what I was going to say. Thinking oh, about the feedback, the thinking yeah, about the more, feedback more, all day. More and more. <laughs> yeah, that is absolutely true. Yeah. It was thinking about the feedback all day. Like that's, I mean. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's Here, it. Me and then you know, um, having that such a a very strong connect to this, you know, conversation that was basically. Here. Mm -hmm. with the world very cool yeah i felt like that a lot with um with net art in general when i encountered it because i rarely rarely got to a city center that had a lot of contemporary art i mean i got to it maybe like once a year or twice a year and so it was just like oh my gosh, you know, free art coming to me and it was great <laughs> and it was wonderful. And I was like, so delighted. And that's kind of why I started loop was because I wanted to have a place that wasn't located in, you didn't have to live in New York, you know, or LA, although we have plenty of artists from there, but you know, you didn't have to be there to participate. That's the most beautiful thing about net art. Yeah, true. And, and we were like, so excited about like it was an explosion of um art happening that was so accessible and oh god what is that um it was so accessible and exciting and um it was just a few, just a few i think a few weeks ago mitchell f chan was Hello? over at my place he was talking he was saying that he really okay thank you i'm gonna get a beat and like my cohorts for being part of that uh because it was ex it was a thrill i mean you were just thinking about the pol the possibilities of an html page um looking at how people you know um handled these you know problems and issues of being online uh, with their artwork uh, it was it was great I, I i can't say enough about how wonderful it was to 
be part of that and participate fully and also, you know, feel recognized, feel seen. But at the same time, seriously, we had no idea of the reach. We <laughs> just thought it was like a small scene of, um, you know, cohorts, congenial, like just like, you know, a congenial little professional scene. Uh, we didn't have a sense of what we were doing in terms of like the broadcast. Mm. Well, so what, as far as network is, or a net art is concerned, what was the first kind of either work that you encountered that, you know, got you to thinking about making something of your own and, and also maybe what was the first, first kind of net art, um, that you made? Oh, well, um, I'd have to thank Sally McKay because she was making these gifts and her aesthetic is off the wall. She has no problem looking like making things look crude or ugly. They are raw. What she made was like raw and fast a lot of the time, though she was totally capable of great refinement. But, you know, she chose that kind of swift, quick and dirty aesthetic and she but importantly, she was working with uh, photographic footage in her gifts. And I had not, I, although I, I had video footage, um, I've been doing you know, video art for a few years before that, and you know, worked with technology a lot in my, my um, career. I, I, had, I had not been attracted to gifts because up until then to me, I just thought they were graphics. And they bored me. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not. I don't enjoy doing graphics. I, I prefer, you know, photo-based um, approach to things. And so, this is I saw this potential. And and of course, Tom Moody was making gifts, but you know, he had, he was owning gifts. So you know, I I did never spoke about that. But with Sally, I um, was able to. Uh, I, I mean, I, I said, you know, I kind of want to make gifts and she goes oh my god you should absolutely and you know she showed me all the uh, softwares and i started making them and it was like that it changed my life i mean changed my career changed fucking everything and just from that you know simple um encouragement it was all that it took and kind of, it's kind of wonderful when you think about that that you know these little turning points in your life which like pivot on something seemingly so small mm -hmm. for sure so and so when i started um i was just making i was using um my own camera footage and i i, I could start posting them on twitter they go you know, way back, and um, and they're so much different from what I I do now. But I've been kind of like going through the archives and throwing things up as I've I, as I found them. Um, so it was basically me trying to deal with like the page, a web page or a website, you know, a, a context, and um, you know, create these very brief, abrupt moving images or collages of moving images. Uh, so I was still working within four corners, rectangles. Um, I was not trying to bust out of a frame yet. Um, and so I, I did a lot of that. And then I kind of got sucked into this, the glorious, wonderful world of um, everyone else making gifts. And, and, <laughs> and these are people who aren't positioning themselves as artists. They're just mm -hmm. making a variety of reasons. Like it was just because um, it was simple. It was fun. There was enough easy software to use. Um, the, the the sources were everywhere. You know, uh, it. I loved it. I loved that. And it was it was kind of it was absolutely inane. It was chaotic. Um, it was you know down and dirty a lot of the time. Um, I mean, just the variety of moving image that. Um, I could find and so I was absolutely entranced with all of this and so I just started collecting them and you know reassembling them on a web page and you know altering them in some way but not too much um and <laughs> is someone driving a truck that's chalk 
little scooter, actually. I'm here in Miami Beach, and um, I'm just <laughs> right in the middle of it. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I was going to ask about the content of your, of your uh, you say GIFs, um, yeah. but I, I, I confess I say GIFs. Um, I hope that doesn't, I know, I hope that doesn't cause any problems between us, but, um, anyway, so the content of your GIFs are, you know, I was, I just started teaching again after three years and I was showing them your work as I always show all of, all students, your work immediately. Uh, (laughs) but it's always fun because as soon as I never know what's going to happen, you know, when I open up your, your Twitter or your Instagram or anything, I'm not sure what I'm going to scroll down. I mean, these are college level, but they're undergraduates, you know? So it's always a surprise, you know, like I have to tell them that, you know, you might see something, you know, that going into something else. Um, (laughs) And you know, you're not we're going that. into a strange place. You may see something that you know shouldn't be there. Like who there. knows? Well, that's what I'm asking you. How do you decide? Like that—that that is such a core component of what makes a Lorna Mills. Like that is such a core component. What are your thoughts behind what you pick to make these out of? Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm. How am I throw? I mean, I'm just searching for gifts. You know for an hour a day, like several hours a week that I'm just looking for source gifts and they don't have to be, you know, freshly made, but, you know, just gifts that are, that have some kind of like free saw or there's just something interesting about them that holds, you know, my eye and I know will hold someone else's uh, attention. And, and then I just like download them and I spend a lot of my time cutting up stuff and I don't, think so much about the content. I'm not worried. To me, if, if it's out there online, you know, it's fair game, um, you know, to have on, on my hard drive. Mm-hmm. Uh, once I start assembling and creating a finished piece, whether it's a single GIF on, on a color, some kind of color field background, or it's like a larger collage, that's when, of course, I'm thinking about the content. Um, most of the time, I'm like collecting them for a variety of formal reasons or technical reasons that, you know, visually they'll be easy to cut. I can see what's going on there. Um, it's basically, you know, what can I use? So I'm like running around greedily, you know, extracting this. Um, hmm. So I'm, I'm not an idea artist. I, I think I've only had one good idea in my life. And um, I, I have like, my career has coasted on that for years. That was like the waste of something project I did. But, you know, the rest of the time, I'm not planning. I have a format. I, I you know, and which changes all the time, depending on, on my needs, uh, a process which I'm really comfortable with and I'm very committed to, and I'm sure of it. Uh, so I'm, 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 as Una said this in one of her, her talks about talking about, I'm not saying anything new, but I'm going deeper. And I, I love that because yeah, mm-hmm. if you get committed to something, you, you have conviction about what you're doing and you can't help but to go deeper with it. As for like, you know, my questionable content, why not? <laughs> um, talk, um, digital media tree, of course, never censored my anyone's work. You were you were free to you know do whatever you wanted. Uh, he also stores the images like, um, and this also he's never charged anyone. Mm. For this. So he's been running this for twenty years, um, and just out of the incredible generosity and you know of like affection with his friends and and you know he's he's obviously engaged with the content of the, of the blogs as well like all the blogs are, are part of that little network so um i if something if i have an image that's a, like you know an element you think of this separate gifts as elements in a collage if i have an element that is contentious um and it works it works formally. Um, it just sets up those, helps to set up the relationships uh, that are going on between all the images in the collage. Then I can't not use it. 
Mm-hmm. Just like to, it's it's just I have to like those those are the rules. Uh, so and as time goes on, I'm, yeah, sure. In real life, I'm terribly embarrassed about some of the shit I've done. Like I can't believe I did that. But online, I'm not. Like it, it's and it has nothing to do with any kind of courage or anything. It's just like, oh, who cares anymore? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, for sure. No, I, I, I love it. I don't, I don't ever shrink from it. And I think it's really wonderful. And I love putting it in my, I mean, putting, putting a Lorna Mills, uh, GIF like on a PowerPoint is one of my favorite things. <laughs> Just, <laughs> well, if only the corporate world caught on to that. Oh my gosh. It would be amazing. It would be amazing. So um, anyway, I don't know, uh, Cha, uh, Buki, you guys go ahead. I'm just going to, you know, take over. So Cha, go ahead. <laughs> Silence. Silence. Okay. I'll, I'll ask another question. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll ask another like quick question. So, yeah. So when I remember, First of all, I actually, Cha asked me, and I don't remember when I first saw your work. I just don't remember it. I know it was in the early 2000s. Um, And I know that, like, you know, the community aspect of net art, you know, is something I feel like had a heyday. And then I was wondering... Do you think that we're... Do you think that... there are places still that we can mingle. Is it discord? You know, um, is it Twitter? Is it, I mean, our X or whatever this is, what, where, where do you think we can all go? I mean, it, it seems like a lot of it is Twitter, right? <laughs> yeah. And that, that, and that's, you know, for like, you know, the NFT reason, that, that's, uh, you know, something totally different. It's a different type of discourse. It's, um, um thing is the conversations on twitter for the most part if they are long conversations are basically premised on someone needing to defend themselves in some mm-hmm. way <laughs> um, it's not um you know, it's not about conversations and ideas like for most of the time i mean there are some absolutely brilliant people there but we're all like i, I said it we as if i am but a lot of them are in the like in the DMs, and that's actually where the fun is. Mm-hmm. Um, and that to me feels more like, you know, the, the, the blogging world in that um, it's congenial, we can argue, um, it's the arguments are done in good faith. Um, like rarely, I mean, the slippery arguments, that's for like, you know, your, your timeline on Twitter. That's, that's where all that happens. But actually in the dms um the conversation is wonderful and it comes the closest to reminding me of uh you know back in the day mm-hmm. thanks but i i don't know where to go for net art <laughs> i don't anymore I, I, it's kind of sad no one I, i've never even thought of that question mm. okay so where, where's shaw cha do you know where to go ibuki do you know where to go well, I know. I mean, what I did after um, after post internet was coined, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I went off the internet. I thought that was what we were supposed to do. <laughs> so, yeah, that was a damn good idea. <laughs> and, then, and then, and then I ended up somehow. I ended up on Facebook. And I ended up doing kind of a net art type thing and ended up with these communities of uh, lots of uh, people from Brazil Mm -hmm. and other parts of the world. And we were using our DMs in group, group, uh, like remix chats. So we'd send images back and forth and send one, remix it, send it back, back and forth. And it was, so that's what I did. Now, I mean, I think you can, I think if, if somebody wants, if we want, we could, you know, start a net, a, a net art club, any one of these social, <laughs> oh. 
it just takes like energy. <laughs> the time, you know. It takes energy. It's so, like there's yeah. there's a lot that's demanded, like you know, of, of your time. But yeah. one thing I love about what you're saying about like you know, getting on Facebook and getting on Twitter is that these large corporations want to control the commons, but the commons always find a way, you know, to slip in there and use it for their own purposes. And you know, thank God for that because. You know, that's important. Um, we're not we're not as manipulated as as they want to think we are, mm-hmm. so to speak. And um, so we like everyone finds ways around it. You know, to find their communities and to have genuine, honest conversations that you wouldn't be able to have publicly. And that's also the idea of the public conversation was like something. You know, I honed on on um, the blog was just setting up how I was going to, Sally and I did actually discuss how we were going to present ourselves. And it was, we decided it was very important to both of us that we weren't talking about our private lives. And this was to the point where Sally got married or to, you know, her husband, George, and there was no announcement on the blog. Like she didn't want anyone to know. And so all I did was like post a, a, a photo I had taken um, of her hand, just her hand and his shoulder, her hand on his shoulder, which was actually really sweet. I loved the image. And I, you know, I announced that two people who should, you know, who should not be named. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because up until then, actually, most people thought Sally and I were a couple. And we didn't care if they did with me. Who cares what yeah. you think? Um, but um, but you know, like the real pri- your real private life, you know, just kept it to yourself. And that has made like slipping into social media comfortably so much easier for me because I'd already defined my boundaries yeah. for how I wanted to like present myself publicly. Yeah, I don't know if you remember this, Lorna, but about a year ago, I. Well, I was, I don't know when it was, it was during the uh, NFT in NYC thing. I was in town and I saw it. I saw you at Thomas Urban Gallery. Oh, that was me. That was you. Oh, my God. So I came up, I came up to you. I had, you know, I have a lot of chutzpah and I came up to you and I was just like, I know who you are. You're Lauren and Mills. And you literally said, how do you know who I am? There is no pictures of me on the internet. <laughs> oh, I'm so good at doing, like, keeping them off. Like, and, and people respected that, which is nice. But I just... Yeah. I, I was so excited to see you, though, because you were in the show at Thomas Urban. So yeah. I was like, and you were talking, and I wanted to just, you know, say hello. But it was so funny. Yeah. And I said, well, there was this one video. So I, I told you how. And I remember that you were kind of, like, flabbergasted. But um... Oh, yeah. I, like, I, I must find that video and burn it down. Um, <laughs> I really, I just, I don't want, I don't want to have to, like, think about visual representations of myself i would like to be mm. free of that um i, I mean th- that's important for me online mm-hmm. but what you were saying before about like you know showing work to your students when i'm invited to um go to like a, a, a i don't get them many canadian invites but I, I used for a while i was getting a lot of american invites to you know a variety of colleges like nyu and uh, pratt and i there was a cuny i um SAIC and um, there's one more that I can't remember. Anyway, I go to these places and the first image was generally, when I started talking, was generally an orgy or something. It was just <laughs> something ridiculous. Well, it breaks the ice. It does. It, it does. Yes. Like, Welcome um, to so class. Like, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. I'm sorry. I'm just sticking around with my phone. So anyway, I, do, I just want to set them up for what's to come and it's also i because i'm a woman i kind of have an advantage when i use porn in that Mm. it gives everyone permission to think about it and look at it and 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 realize that you know these images aren't necessarily um aggressive attacks (laughs) on us and that um 
the idea of like it's like it's like the wife of bath and canterbury t- tales where she's like she's bowdy she's like joking about sex all the time and it's that it's that kind of in- inclusiveness that you know men and women can actually you know have hilarious conversations about this um and enjoy like the the goofiness that goes along you know with you know normal human sexuality or or abnormal who cares um (laughs) and what the hell is normal um so i to me that was important and i done a large installation uh called ungentrified um several years ago for nui blanche in toronto and like it's a one one night event and uh, which is like the city is packed out with people coming to look at art all night and i was invited by um Kira named Stefan Hantro, who um, said he wanted something super internet-y, be as internet <laughs> as possible. And so he, was, he gave me this atrium in the school, which was like about three stories high. And, you know, the best equipment, the best projectors, um, probably about, I don't, I can't remember the number of monitors as well on the floor, but these, you had this, you know, dark room that was like, I've saved the porn, like, you know, doggy blowjob porn and things like that. I saved that for tiny monitors. Like, I just thought, okay. Because, <laughs> you know, if it was large, it would just... I, there's something about small monitors demanding your attention. And also, because it's a small monitor, you can get away fast. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not totally unkind. But it happened... It was one of those wonderful experiences that I'll probably never go through again, where I was in a room packed full of people, men and women, all ages. I mean, there's a warning sign, come on, like adults only. Like I had, I, I, I was totally fine with that, you know, adult content, yeah. Um, but it was so hilarious. People stayed so long and looking at every detail and giggling, the amount of giggling and pointing <laughs> in this large crowd surrounded by a lot of dubious imagery. It was a riot. It was so much fun. And boy, if I could have that again, you know, in in, in an exhibition situation, I, I could die happy because there, there's nothing like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, that's that's why I like using it on PowerPoints, by the way. Um, your, your, they look amazing. Yeah, but go ahead, Shaw. Take it away. Well, I was just, I was wondering where, I would like to see this. So <laughs> if you had to put the, I mean, would it be possible to like, to redo that? Yeah, because I did, I did remount it in Dresden um, a few years ago, like, I guess, before the, obviously before the lockdown. Um, so um, it was remounted. It was a different room. The space wasn't as big and the equipment wasn't as good. Like the equipment was like, if the projectors weren't as bright as I needed them to be. And of course, people who saw it still thought it was great. Like they enjoyed it. However, um, I remembered how beautiful it had looked once with, you know, the right equipment. So that, that was, that's a hard thing to take, but you know, in the end, like I was happy to have it shown again. Um, and I had a bunch, it was kind of a fun experience um, mounted, remounting it again because I I had jet lag and I was feeling sick and uh, so I was just I'm just lolling on some pillows on the floor while all these Germans like you know men are like installing this work and hanging projectors and finding monitors and I'm just like this potato in the middle of the room and <laughs> doing all this work and um, once the, the monitors got set up and you know I finally started loading the um, the smaller the smaller pieces in into these uh, monitors. All of a sudden, like they were very engaged, and um, that like no, I remember some guy like looking at like you know the doggy blowjob video for it, for instance, and like just amazed as he's walking by. I'm, like, I'm still lying on a pillow in the middle of the floor, going, <laughs> "Now you like my art, don't you?" <laughs> he's like, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah." <laughs> Uh, well, that would be it would be great to have that here in Miami. Um, yeah, well, you should you should talk to Kalani. <laughs> she 
She's she's yeah. my rep. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, no. If you, if you find me a space and um, and some funding, and I I I absolutely love to remount that because um, I I I'm proud of it, you know. And and the other thing is, like I I as well. I mean, yes, I love the internet. Yes, I love dev art. Yes, I love you know web pages. Um, but I still really need and want and love like hanging real shows like in the world physical shows that is still i love i just love the whole process around it um nothing there's nothing more fun than for me than installation with some technical support thank you very much you know i don't want to do this all on my own anymore but um i i, I, I get such a pleasure out of it and to me that's the main show like i want to be doing installations all the time and then just posting the leftovers on social media or on, on, online um even though for many years online has been a, a destination for my work it's still i like the world i like being in it for sure yeah it sounds like oh go, yeah go ahead abuki yeah, I saw Ronald work at the uh, Spring Break show in 2020, and I was so fascinated by your very visual images. I still remember the bacon uh, gif, I think. So these, uh, your animalistic kind of visual images are very vivid on the digital surface, especially in the internet. So how these animals and the visual images to uh, related to the uh, in internet? Um, well, first of all, being the internet was made for cats by cats, but, uh, the, I, yeah, the animal thing, um, there, uh, first of all, the images are accessible. There's plenty of them and like the kind of cross species romance and is, is something that fascinates me and our, the human view of animals that we are you know, projecting our emotions onto, you know, pets, random wild animals. We think we're in communication with them. Um, you know, I, it's like, I think that dolphin really liked me. You know, that, that kind of absolute <laughs> ridiculous attitude that we do have to animals. And, you know, then we slaughter them and eat them. I do that too. But um, so they're important to me sometimes. Like I, what I project on some of them is that they're observing us. Or just watching this like total clusterfuck of humanity and so like I, I do like the silent animals sometimes you know incorporated on the screen just just looking at all this shit before them um so that's definitely part of that okay. <laughs> I love and it. i love it when people dress up ducks you know it's like, if you put if you put clothes on a groundhog i'm there i love that yeah Arms, arms on birds videos are my new favorite things. It's those oh, videos yes. with animated arms on birds. Oh my God. Even if they're stick arms, like <sighs> it's the stick figure arms on birds that just drive me wild. I love them. So amazing. Like, like, anyone could do that. So it's great. And the I love ass ones. Sorry? The ass worms that you would give. <laughs> Uh, are you talking about the Ghosty collections? I'm taking a look at your Instagram page. I see the uh, your music publish. Okay, let me get my eye because I'm not sure. Now, Instagram's a little tricky for me because I can't post anything, you know, terribly interesting or exciting. I don't like I've had my stuff pulled off. Um, Instagram so often, not as often as Wombat, who seems to be the queen of like getting cancelled on Instagram for her work. But I, um, I, I'm careful. I don't want to lose these accounts. So yeah, I have to like mind my manners and, um, so to speak, and and figure out you know how to get around the algorithms if I can. But you know, stuff gets flagged and um, it seems like Twitter is like the only place I can really do anything interesting. <laughs> um, like no one's complained for some reason about me. I didn't realize people could complain on Twitter. 
I got kicked off one time. <laughs> Oh really? <laughs> yes, yes. And I and I have a whole conspiracy theory, but I'm not I was I had just posted something about an artist who was extremely critical of like all social media. Um this was pre-Elon Musk. And okay. uh yeah, and and I had just posted this long interview that I had done with him and he just like really really like pooped on, you know, social media and Twitter and all that sort of stuff. And then the next day I was kicked off. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> God, like it's not enough to run the world. Like you have to, you, you still need people, you know, to tell you that they love you. It's like and that everything you're doing is perfect. Now, plus their hearts. It was just art. Big deal. Yes. <laughs> Control yourself. It's no big deal. Truly. <laughs> Okay, come on, come up with a question. Stop the dead air. I can't think of what to say next. Abuki Cha, it's your turn. It's our turn. Well, are you are you working on um, any show at the moment? And maybe you can tell us about how that how that's coming together. Oh, I'm I'm. I've been working on a commission, a corporate commission for a while. I'm at the, you know, hurry up and wait stage of finding out, um, getting confirmation. And that will be shown publicly on some, in a very odd kind of screen situation uh, where it's it's like a, a ribbon of screens, like a circular, like a ribbon wrapping around in, in an atrium at a corporate head office. So, um, yeah. Uh, the actually the, the person who had approached me about the curator for the collection was the same person who had curated the ungentrified show with all the porn. Um, like, so that was actually kind of funny because I could just send them all sorts of filthy images and say, I was thinking of using this gift. I was thinking of using that gift. What do you think? And, and he couldn't believe actually that my emails were getting through like their corp their corporate firewall or whatever because like you know if you're in a corporation your emails are kind of under surveillance you know for content whatever and he's like i can't believe i actually got this email um so i it's that's been fun um yeah i've, got, I've, I've always got something going like i'm disgustingly busy all the time um but uh you know from shows i there's there's projects there's always projects. That's the bad. I'm being vague, but I have to be. <laughs> well, what, what what about a dream show or a space that you'd like to work in out of any other? My dream show is a fleet of video trucks. Like that would be the best thing on earth. Like just have a because I was on a video um, Isaiah in Montreal a few years ago. Um, I was invited, you know, to show my, to create works for a video truck. There was, I think there was about four or five artists that were in this project, and so they hired like one or two video trucks, and you know, your image, your video is playing on these huge screens that are driving through the city. And I would love to do that again. I would love to have, and I think actually Robert Rauschenberg once said this, that what he really wanted, when he was asking him what his ideal was, he said he wanted a fleet of trucks. There's just something about, you know, that, that motion. <laughs> and, and, and like that makes it really accessible, like out in traffic. Oh so, yeah, that's, that's the dream show. I, uh, Cha, I was wondering, I'm trying to invite up some of the current cohort, uh, the ones that were chosen. Can It's not working, so could you invite up any of the current artists that, you know, were chosen by Lorna, so if they want to Absolutely. talk? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh. Yeah, because we have a couple of the artists that you chose in here. We have, uh, we have Crystal um, down at the bottom. Um, like I'm putting them on blast because I didn't actually ask them if they wanted to do this, but if you want, you can come up here. Um, and I just wanted to give you a report, Lorna, your, your group of artists that you chose have been, um, the most 
ambitious artists that have ever come into Loop. They have broken the space probably 10 times in a month. <laughs> <laughs> well, I made those choices with, you know, the idea of having a, a private army. That was what I really wanted. <laughs> I, I, I'm so glad I succeeded. You did. Um, you did. And they were so, and I just want to say to everybody, what it most amazed me was that, you know, you chose and you actually went through all of the, all of the uh, applications. And there was like over 50 applications. And I said something to you. I said, hey, you want me to go through and kind of just, you know, see which ones I think are good or not. You know, I can like, I don't want to, I don't want to make you go through 53 folders full of artwork. And you were like, no, 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 no. I'm going to go through all the applications. I thought that was so cool and so nice of you. Thank you. Well, I, I remember what it was like to answer open calls and feel like they didn't even look at your package like that. That So I would never do that. Like I, I, I figured like if they could, anyone's going to make, you know, go to the trouble of, uh, submitting stuff and you know when you're a young artist submissions take for fucking ever um, i mean once you get older more experienced you've got a package that you could just whip off anywhere and and you know with every all your media prepared all of that but as a younger artist don't and so in all like i think it'd be horrible to like ignore their efforts even if they you know were weren't right for the program um it's still and actually i think someone once said that you know applying for grants for instance in canada even if you don't get the grant your work has been seen by people who've never seen it before mm -hmm. and it is being discussed by people it's like for the first time like uh, obviously you're not privy to you know a jury's discussion about your work but that's important and even though it's invisible to you you, know, you just get a rejection letter or an acceptance letter. It it's it still matters that you did apply and 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 make that effort. I thought there's a Una, um, beloved Una. She actually asked two questions that I I, I loved uh, and I wanted to answer it. It was like when you create each art each art artwork, do you have a specific audience in mind and how do you title your pieces? My specific audience is just adults. Like I'm not thinking about, I was once invited to a children's fest mm. festival, um, which <laughs> I was like, was a curator. I told, it was like a media festival in the Netherlands, uh, like the gear towards children. I was like, are you fucking kidding? <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen my work? Rosa Makeman had, had recommended me for this. <laughs> so I thought it was Rosa. So, but there were so many back and so much back and forth. I keep on sending him like my place. Like this isn't so, like look at this. This I maybe they thought I'd do something special and clean for them. And, you know, <laughs> that I'm not going to do that unless there's big money in it for it. Then okay. Um, <laughs> so, but yeah, totally adults. Any any, any adults. Um, I. I, I have found that if you just, and I, I do know artists that just kind of gear their work, the, the only audience they want is the important audience. They mm -hmm. or what they think is professionally important. So, you know, the curators, the art critics, and, you know, the hell with and their fellow artists that they admire, but the hell with the public. And, you know, in my life, I found that people have the best comments I've received um, from have come from left field. It's just come from people that surprised that you didn't expect to get your work. And, you know, you're told very insightful things that you would never thought of yourself that kind of like, Oh yeah, that's true. I was doing that. Uh, so, you know, to, to limit your audience or just to focus on the, the audience, you know, in your head, that you know, matches your ambitions that, you know, it's not a good idea. And actually, the answer about the titles for my pieces, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for asking that. Because I have an obsession with horse racing. Um, and I, I've done several works where I use like a text, a video text prop of racehorse names. And I like fell into this wormhole of, um, of looking at uh, the Jockey Club site and... Um, uh, the um, 
registries, the sites for, you know, registering thoroughbred names. And there was something about the constraints of naming a racehorse that I, abs- I I loved. And one of them, one of the constraints was like, of course, you have to have X number of, it can't be over, you know, a certain um, um, word count or sorry, um, like, it's on, like, I think you had like 15 or 16 letters that you couldn't go above. I can't remember the actual real amount. And, um, and also each name had to be distinct absolutely Mm -hmm. distinct in that try thinking of a world where there's only one person named jennifer only one person named karen only one person named dave only one person named john no one else can have the name and suddenly you have to really invent be super inventive about what you're going to name someone or something like if we did that with humans it'd be kind of awesome um and, and we'd never get like mix up Dave's or, or, or Steve's or anything. We, we'd always know. Um, so sure. I, I did, I did love that about it. And so I have just a da- like lists and lists and lists of racehorse names. I'm just like picking them up, but you know, just ridiculous, absurd, wonderful, um, sly, because you can't have like, it can't be sexual innuendo. You can't misrepresent a horse's bloodline. So you can't say, you know, uh, secretariat son or anything like, you're not allowed to do that. Um, you're not allowed to use names of public figures without their permission, but you can use a lot of puns and a lot of cheesy sexual, sexual innuendo. So there's like the list, can be so delightful. Um, and you, of course you have the option to use like, you know, multiple languages. It doesn't have to be in English because of course, you know, race, horse racing goes on all around the world. Uh, so I've got those, I've got these, this huge list that's always open on my desktop. And for instance, when I'm about to mint something, I, I can't mint something and I can't exhibit something until I found the right title from Hmm. that list. (laughs) I love that. Crystal. Crystal is one of the, one of the uh, chosen artists. So go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Fantastic. Um, first of all, I want to say it is an honor to be part of, of your army. Um, very much. Um, You'll be I, deployed soon. No, I also teach, so we'll have many, many years of Florida Mills armies, aerials, classes as well, right? Um, my, I just had a quick question with you to talk about, like, how kind of the development of technology or, you know, in, um, evolution of technology has kind of maybe hampered your process but also helped grow your process, you know, in terms of thinking of like a VR or the metaverse, um, oh, the idea of AI, the idea of like certain file formats not being accepted anymore, um, you know, and then of course, Flash, rest in peace. Um, Flash, where I started of, my programming, yeah. well, no, I started in director, but yeah, Flash. Carla Gannis is staying with me. She's visiting Toronto. And we spent yesterday evening, we had a long conversation about Flash and, you know, what, you know, that program had done for so many, um, you know, we could make money, for instance. Like, it was kind of great in those days. And and I still work in Flash. So I have, like, the last version uh, on my system. Um, I, I have never been the kind of artist who felt I needed to dominate every new technology that came out. And I never felt like I had to explore every new technology, but that's only because as an artist right now, I know I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Like, you know, it's, it's, I have that conviction. Um, my, I, I'm more excited. I mean, I'm excited that there are artists that are exploring this and pushing this and every technology that comes out there on top of it. And I'm delighted with it because I mean, first of all, I mean, every, everyone I know, who's a practicing artist and everyone I know and like, let's, let's qualify this, um, knows that they can't make all the art in the world, that no one's making the most important art in the world. No one person is, you know, doing the, the only thing that matters. It's, it's, you know, a large 
network, whatever. It's like a hazy cloud of artists, you know, occasionally um, coming. I, I, I can't come up with a metaphor for this right now. And like, please don't make me think. But um, it's more the idea of like with the technology, what I love and, you know, with social media is that as an artist, I always feel like I'm part of something. I don't have to be the boss of something. No one needs to be the boss of all art or you know, the king or you know, the greatest. That, I mean, that's just ridiculous. And my, I have, my issue with the NFT world is that, of course, because there's a market involved, you've got this metric, you know, to like to quantify <laughs> positions on, on lists and, you know, in terms of marketing and sales that this idiotic mm -hmm. language is coming back of like the greatest artist in NFTs, the great, it's so absurd and laughable and that there are artists competing for this. Mm -hmm. It's like, who's the biggest gas bag in the room? Like it, <laughs> I, it cracks me up. It really does. Hey, I don't want to take up too much time, but I do have one more question. Uh -huh. I, teach, I teach a class called Body and Digital here in Chicago at the University of Chicago. And in that class, we're exploring like different realms of like how the digital identity kind of affects us in IRL or, and URL. Um, and we and in the class, it's also a studio art class, the students are also making. And we bring up, I bring, of course, show your work because it's perfect. Um, and we talk about like censorship with it and that as well. But we also talk about the fact that like, you know, as has been pointed out, you're very good at keeping your physical identity offline. Um, and I'm just kind of curious of like what drove that and kind of like, has there been kind of any self discovery because of kind of having like the art be the only kind of presence or facade that you have online? Um, no, I just, I didn't ever want to play the, um, the selfie game because I'm, an, I am as vain as everyone else on the planet. And, you know, I did, I didn't want to spend my time having to like, get, like light myself lovingly and get that perfect photograph. So, you know, I feel good about myself online and, you know, people would like me or whatever. Um, cause I had a nice smile or something that, I don't want any part of it. Mm -hmm. And also, also, I mean, I hate, being photographed, uh, it makes me very uncomfortable. Um, and when I do presentations, the first thing like at schools that um, whoever's introducing me has to say is that, you know, if you want to take pictures of her, it's fine. Just don't post them on social media. Um, it's like for a variety of reasons. Um, Joe McKay once gave an introduction to me and he, uh, and he went actually into more depth because he thought, Lorna had done this very interesting thing from the blogging days where um, I had decided not to use my image in any way, you know, in the net art world. Um, it, was, it was not nothing to do with like a physical, identifiable, identifiable physical being of, of what I am was, you know, not going to be online. And in, he said, like, you know, it was it seemed pretty easy to do in these small circles of people. Like it was. Um, it, you could accomplish it because, you know, we're all friends and that, but, you know, once social media happened, um, I would like, you know, if I saw my picture up, someone tagged me, I'd immediately, you know, contact them, beg them to take it down. They always did. And so what's, he said, he thought of it as an experiment and, and he asked the students, I'm, he said, I'm amazed that she's been able to pull this off for so long. And, um, I, I would, like to say, you know, she, she would appreciate it if you would help with this. Mm -hmm. And so when you make that kind of appeal, then the people, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm part of this, of not like doxing Lorna physically. <laughs> so that, 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 that's like the image thing. Um, awesome. Ooh. So community still exists. If you ask people nicely, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, listen, if you treat people with like goodwill, mm -hmm. they generally respond in kind. It's very rare that people respond with malice or, or paranoia or anything. Like most of the time people, you know, are kind to each other, you know, or want to be like somehow 
want to be. I'm, I'm, I'm quite optimistic about that, to tell you the truth. Hmm. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah. You're welcome. Okay. Yeah, I can't um, wait for you to see the show. The show is going to be coming up. It's on the first, and it's it's going to be an epic show in loop. Um, it's amazing. All these artists actually, they put so much stuff into the different spaces that we had to give them their own spaces because they were crashing, like literally crashing the metaverse. <laughs> Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah. Now, I had a problem. Like, I mean, he kept on inviting me into the boutiques. And, um, you know, in answer to a previous question, I do not jo enjoy being in the metaverse. I, I do not enjoy having to, you know, hit arrow keys and number keys to keep me from, like, flying up to the ceiling and being stuck there like all day i hate it i don't enjoy it. can we like can we just dispense with this this is 2d space it's not 3d space it's on my screen the screen is flat um so this pretension of of a uh, environment on a computer screen to me is ridiculous um i and so like you know all the, i i get why people like it and some of them are brilliant, um, brilliantly put together. But, you know, of course, there's all this now, like, you know, software, corporate programs and platforms um, for people, you know, to easily make their own. And I don't enjoy looking at the word. I just, like, on the screen, I'm fine. But don't make me move around. <laughs> I got other things to do. <laughs> Cranky lady, like him. Old lady yells at Cloud. <laughs> I think that's what we have to do. We can't, I mean, we can't, we can't do everything. I mean, I don't, the older I get, the less things, you know, the things I just start, okay, I don't have time for that. I don't have space in my brain for it. Well, I have space in my brain for looking at what other artists have done with it. I'm totally excited by it because I'm not, like I said, I'm not gonna make all the art in the world and I'm not gonna use all the tools available to me. Um, and, you know, you make choices. I, I mean, just as important as what you put in a work is also what you don't put in a work. And, and someone, you know, at once when I was in school, it said, you know, it was a, a definition of sophistication was knowing all your options and choosing just enough of them or, or one or two, whatever that, you know, sophistication was you know, knowing what to say and what not to say. And so that, I mean, I, and I enjoy that tension between what you're saying and what you're not saying and, and the subtext and the slyness of it that, you know, goes back to like, female Victorian writers, for God's sake. Um, there's a subversion to it, which I, I take kind of great delight in. And it's like, it's fun to decode it in other artists. And I definitely have it in my work. There, there's always something I want to slip in that maybe will unfold in time. Because um, well, I do believe that artwork, like well, I want to make artwork that anyone's invited to look at. Like it's, it's, the entries, there are so many entry points for an audience. And to me, that's like, you know, it's, it's part of being gregarious as an artist. And, you know, artists are ultimately gregarious. And then, you know, it's, it's sometimes like later viewing or thinking about it is rewarded. But, you know, more is seen, more of the relationships that are embedded in the structure are are obvious become obvious or become apparent and like that's the reward of looking at anyone's art is like slowly it, it stays with you don't have to stand in front of a piece for, for hours or anything like mm -hmm. that it, I, it's more that what stays with you after you've looked at it and what you think about and what has resonated with you and you like put these clues together as a viewer and you're just like Eureka! Now I think I know what they're doing, <laughs> and so but that's reward. That's a very rewarding thing about looking at art. How did you? 
how did you get your start as an artist? I mean, what, how did that happen for you? I mean, was it instantaneous one day you decide, did you make a decision or did it? Yeah, absolutely. I was five years old and there was a book in the house. It was called Creative and Mental Growth in Art. Now, it was, I was precocious. I, I, I could read at five, but this book was a textbook for art therapy from the fucking 50s, and it had one of my aunt's names in it. And I was like, so it ended, like, for some reason, like, you know, ends up in the house. And I poured over this book because it was full of pictures, children's drawings. And, um, and you know, the, book, the contents of the book, they were discussing, like, you know, haptic art, you know, drawings by, um, you know, children with disabilities, drawings, and there was, and they, so they all had captions on these drawings. It was black and white. I don't, I don't, I still have the book somewhere um, in my house right now, and I, I've been meaning to scan it and, and show it to like just small groups of people so we can howl with laughter. <laughs> it was pretty entertaining now that I think about it. But there was one, there was a drawing on one page, and the caption was, drawing of such and such a thing by a gifted seven-year-old child. And it was the gifted. I was like, I want to be fucking gifted. <laughs> <laughs> so not only did I decide to be an artist, I decided to be a really fucking ambitious artist. <laughs> and I did fill that, that, that book with my drawings. <laughs> All my, my early work, so I actually have the first pieces of art I ever made and they're all like stick figures of women smoking <laughs> the cigarette and the, the smoke and they're so freaking hilarious um and I'm so, I, I'm so glad I've, I've, I've kept that book um obviously I, I sell that at auction wow um but so I, I promise images will come out. They will be released into the public for everyone's amusement. And being a serious artist, at, you know, at the age of five, I went on to do still life. <laughs> Wonderful still life I can still remember was three pots in a row. Is <laughs> that, you know, what art was? Now, there was another influence on me at that age was the World Book Encyclopedia that my parents said, well, they were very expensive. And um, it was, of course, it was purchased for my brothers because, you know, Catholic family. So, you know, you know, <laughs> the sun rises and sets on them, doesn't it now? But I, I, I did make a point. I was reading you know, from, you know, A to Z, except I had to skip S because I'm scared of snakes. So, you know, if I accidentally, you know, opened a page with a picture of a snake, I'd, I'd freak out. But when I hit P for painting, um, and if you look at the old World Book Encyclopedia, the P for painting section is wonderful. <laughs> it's, it's um, I mean, it's, it's a very kind of pedestrian, um, like now, the, you know, us being artists and in the know and educated in art, it was a very pedestrian view of painting and the history of painting. But that was it. Like I just was entranced by painting, and I just and I also had this idea that painting was totally smooth and shiny, like the page. So I didn't know that they had surfaces. <laughs> first time I went to a museum, I saw a bit, like I saw my first real painting and it had a surface. It's like, oh my God, it's like brush strokes, you see the brush strokes. I just, so I had been indoctrinated into the pictorial before I saw the physical aspects wow. of, of painting. And what's kind of been fun, when I was in Chicago, I, I was doing a talk at SAIC and the artist John Chambers um, offered to squire me around, like just be fun to hang out with mutual friends. So I said, I'm like, I, I want to go to the uh, music, the big museum and uh, art institute. And so he took me there, and it was hilarious because I realized that all those pictures that I like saw when I was a child, I was so thrilled with, were mostly from the the Chicago like that museum's collection. So finally, I walked into a room. It was like. Oh my God! It's like I'm seeing a bunch of old friends from childhood, <laughs> and really seeing them, like not how I remember them. So that that's kind of a wonderful 
experience. And every time I do like encounter something from the, you know, the my, my world book encyclopedia face, it's, I'm delighted. It, it really you know, does bring me a joy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was a wonderful story. <laughs> yeah. I'm just laughing. I, I'm very curious to, to, to take a look at that book now. <laughs> It, it's, somewhere, it's somewhere in my guest room. I got actually. I think I have to. I gotta find it. I'm gonna find it just to show Carla, because you know she'll be howling her head off <laughs> at it too. Um, it's it's pretty endearing. Yeah, I just I just drew over everything, and I also talked to myself. So I was like the weird kid in her bedroom, <laughs> drawing people smoking cigarettes and, and just carrying on conversations in my head all the time. It was kind of weird precocity that was not encouraged in my family. It's not, not like anyone said, oh, she's creative. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's, help. let's help nurture this. None whatsoever. It was, it was just this weird idiot kid. <laughs> um, Taco Deco, did you want to say something? I saw that you hopped up here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you for bringing me up. Um, I'm Toko Deco, and I've just been laughing this whole time that I've been listening. <laughs> it's been really great. Um, and uh, I really enjoyed um, learning about Lorna's art, and I look forward to to learning more about it. Um, and I, I resonate with what you were saying about um artists being gregarious and you know we're we're social creatures in a way like we um we have to interact with other artists and with an audience and we're showing our work um Mm -hmm. you know is that is that more or less what you meant by that yeah actually yes because even when i was posting it on my work online and had no sense of an audience um it's really important to put your work out. I mean, if you want to develop it, if you don't want to develop as an artist and you know, you're just gonna like work privately, you know, as, as a solitary genius for like for 50 years, so go be you, that's fine. But I think it's actually such, such a big part of the process is to watch an art piece, like enter the world from your studio. Um, and because you suddenly see it through other people's eyes. Mm instead of your own and it, it does become unfamiliar to you it turns and if it's good it doesn't feel like i don't if i've done something really really good it doesn't feel like oh i did that no it feels like it's something beside myself not no longer part of myself and so having it released like and or you know, or just standing beside yourself you get to like view the audience and imagine it through their eyes um, you know, that, that's the role in emp- of like empathy in, in, you know, showing and looking at art. And that's a very big part of, of the process. So it, it matters for your development. It, it, just having it public, whether you actually are in the room or are getting comments on it, to me, I, it, it changes it. Like even in NFTs, when I, like, I mean something, it just is the moment it, it's there on the blockchain. I'm thinking it, it looks different to me. It suddenly becomes like, oh my God, I think I went too far. Or it's <laughs> like, oh, this is boring. Like, I can't imagine anyone wanting this. And it's like, is this too filthy? Uh, it's so it's, it's it, your perspective changes. So yeah, important. Like showing is important. Even if you only show it to five people, it's still, you know, to have it seen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of that makes a lot of sense to me. And what you were saying about not wanting to be in the metaverse quite as much, and it's more about a a two D image um, and the person experiencing it uh, seems very parallel to that. And because it's uh, it seems like it's more about um, the relationship between the viewer and the art piece, where that's important as opposed to your presence in the space if that makes any sense um yeah it does like yeah it's it's it 
don't have this gun. I, I, I can't answer this or, or remark on this with any kind of sophistication or articulation. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Like, it's like, um, I, 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 I agree with the point you're making. I can't add to it. Um, or you fail me. <laughs> Yeah, I guess my question is, um, so you you said that you don't you didn't want to have your your presence sort of in um, out there, and was that a way of? Uh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, go on. Um, was that a way of of kind of keeping a purity between the experience, like the, the viewer and, and experiencing the art without thinking about? like the artist to like who they are first and like just kind of keeping um that connection with the art between whoever's looking at it kind of uh, aside from that and then how is do you think that's going to change now that you're you're in the space and we're hearing you talk and we're hearing you participate and it's awesome but do you think that'll have is that weird for you no no i mean i, I go i go places i meet people um, like it's, it's like I'm not like walking around like you know with a, a bag over my head being in an auto. Like no, I, I I'm you know truly social. <laughs> it's just one thing I love is that if you Google me, um, you know, what comes up in the images is mostly my artwork, and that that's what I want. That's like that's the exactly the interface I want between you know. The world and my art. I don't want me in between. Um, so a friend of mine, like years ago, in a collective gallery I was involved in 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 the nineties, um, early, very early on. Um, there was someone, one of the older artists, said we have to have a group picture because people want to know what artists look like, and that's true. I mean, you do. Um, it's. It's just that the internet wants to know too much, and the internet doesn't always get what it's want. It gets what it wants, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. That's such a good point. Thank you. I mean, you can you can impose your own conditions, you know, <laughs> upon your your yourself. Like we're not absolutely powerless, you know, in in you know, how we negotiate with social media, you can make, you know, firm choices, make have clear boundaries about how you and your work is being shown. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with like, asking for that demanding that negotiating that, you know, with institutions or with platforms or whatever. Um, we have a lot more, you know, choices than than we think generally. Okay. Any other questions? <laughs> yes. I anybody could, else? Go. Please go I, ahead. The empty, the empty, the empty spaces when I'm like trying to drink my coffee. It's like, I know. <laughs> I know. And I'm, I'm also a. I don't like an empty space. So I'm always like, I'm just gonna rush in and say something, and then I try to hold. That's why I keep catching myself and like, oh no, no, cha, <laughs> crystal. Yeah, well, that's how we come. We converse in real life by, you know, talking over each other and, <laughs> and you know, changing. The, I have one actually artist friend that we do Zooms together and we're on two different conversations all the time. Like we're not even looking at the camera. We're like you know, at our keyboards and making like commenting, saying like, like random, like, you know, neuron firings. But we're never actually talking to each other. We're just in each other's presence. And it's, it's kind of delightful. I mean, because we're just both hyper and focused. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, hey, let's spend some time together, you know, being us and not really communicating. But there's, there's something about just being a, having a presence there that yes. um, enhances the uh, experience. Yes, for sure. Oh, I was also going to say, talking about like, so you've made some jokes. You have lots of cats, right? Or do you just make I jokes make about cats. cats? I'm allergic to cats. <gasps> I'm sorry, world. I pretend to like your cats. Oh, I, no. No, I'm a dog lover. I mean, I, I say polite things about other people's pets. When their cat dies, I know the heartbreak. And I, you know, I'm sorry that they break our hearts. They don't live long enough. But I don't 
want cats around me. I don't want to be sneezing all the time. I just <laughs> love dogs. I just need to pet a dog every day. Um, and the bigger the dog, the better. Um, I've been dog free for a year because I'm still in mourning no. <laughs> um, for my 175 pound uh, Neapolitan Mastiff. I, I, there's like this hole in my heart and in my home, but um, I, it's it's expensive to have a dog that's the size of a Shetland pony, oh, you know, wow. in your life. Um, so, like, just in this crap market, if people would just buy more of my art so I could get myself, like, a Harlequin Great Dane and be happy again, huh? <laughs> that, that's the goal. Has that experience informed any of your art, by the way? Like, have you made any artwork um, that includes uh, more dogs or something like that? <laughs> no. Well, I always always dogs i mean it's that is i mean any animal i see online that's doing something absurd of course mm -hmm. i'm going to collect it cut it up and you know add it to a collage so it's 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 that's basically online that, yeah there's certain th things i search for certain things i get excited about when i see them um because they're distinct and novel and they can become a linchpin for a collage because there's always some starting you know, gif in, in my collages that everything else piles on top of it. But um no, it's it's I'm not I'm not I don't not anymore am I making gifts from my own footage or things I see. It's very rare that I do that, um, just because cameras are awkward for me. Um so it's kind of an online mediated experience. Therefore I can stick lots of cats in there because they're not making me sneeze. And if they're like the, those cats without fur that are just like out of a horror show, even better. <laughs> <laughs> like those things are gross. <laughs> you, think, you ever held one of those, like, when there's sphinx or something, you hold one, it's like holding a, a, a ham. Oh God. Oof. Like, why do they exist? Like, I mean, yeah. Well, the thing we don't like about cats is their soft, beautiful fur. It's like, <laughs> we love their personalities <laughs> and their little claws. God, that's the best thing. Well, I I have what I call a cat. I have cat dogs. I have Pekingese, which are the weirdest looking dogs. Yes, uh, they are. Yeah, they, yeah. They, that's a very old breed, too. That was yeah. like. Right. What's Chinese royal family? I think. Yes, so. yes. And everybody always stops me and says, Oh, my grandmother had those. <laughs> <laughs> A giant dog is really good for your image. Like, I am, I mean, I get to walk, I got to walk down the street for like, seven and a half years you know and it was like walking a unicorn and dating a rock star at the same time <laughs> there's nothing like that like everyone's in awe like somehow like you've got this wild beast when in reality it's like a lazy lump that you have to drag his ass everywhere to, you know, to get for him to get exercise but you know image image is big like you know why not <laughs> perfect accessory Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> but let's let just not devolve into like a conversation about pets. I, I, well, I was going to ask about the collages. I love the collages. And um, I, I went to, I think it was, was it, oh gosh, it was like an online opening. Um, Kalani was there and we were, it was like a flat metaverse. Like we could all kind of wander around and we were different uh, GIFs. Do you remember this? It was a few months ago. Oh, oh, oh that's, that's, that's. Um, it was so much fun. That's, a, that is, um, I'm trying to remember the name oh. now of that gallery because it was just recently. Distant? And it's, um, distant? No. Yes, distant this, gallery. Yes. And it's brilliant. Um, uh, Constant Dullart, um, one of my favorite humans in in the world, and an absolutely brilliant artist and hilarious human being, and generous and kind and everything. Like, you know, I I I have an altar to him. Like, I worship him. Um, he coded that, and he he made so many things that are just so idiosyncratic to that space. Like, for instance, like you, you appear in a freaking egg. So, you know, get your camera on and all of a sudden you're like, your face is in an egg shaped 
thing that you can just float around. And um, I, my system software is so old because um, I'm, you know, don't want to change anything. But so I was having trouble. I, I ended up, my egg ended up in the top corner for my opening. <laughs> I was I couldn't, it was, it was, it was a little awkward because what happened, what he coded it for is that if your egg moved towards a cluster of other eggs, you could hear them better. You could be, you became, it was more like a physical space. It was actually a much better metaverse than, you know, a 3d one mm-hmm. um, is that, you know, if you were in proximity to them, then you could actually hear their conversations uh, or, or, you know, see their texts. It, it I love that. I, I thought it was like, you know, a wonderful flat earth that he created that was so rich. And he puts like, you know, the artist showing their, their piece is the background for all of this. And, you know, you end up having like a great conversation. Like it was, you're right. It was the best online opening I've ever been to. Like it was so much fun. And everyone loved being in an egg. <laughs> I, I don't know why. <laughs> it was like, hey, I'm an egg. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was a blast. I don't know if anybody else here like um, went to it, but yeah, I just I love. Uh, I was having uh, dinner with an artist who is not a digital artist at all, but they said, you know, what I just want to see is, you know, I mean, they liked it a lot, but they said, I want to see composition and color always being considered. You know, like that is just sort of like a basic thing it's a basic for me too yeah and that's what i think about when i see your when i see your uh when i see your collages i think you know like oh my gosh these are so these are beautifully composed like they're a painting or like they're any you know uh anything else it doesn't matter that they're online or not if that's what i'm trying to say oh yeah yeah no they they don't have to they can exist offline yeah it it, yeah of course it's like i'm a color i'm also very much a colorist Mm-hmm. Like that matters to me, and that's like from years of painting. And um, I haven't painted in years, but um, Mitchell Chan and I were talking about doing a Sunday Sunday painter group. Like you know, I, I think um, Jeff Beef will be part of it too. That we're just going to go <laughs> to a park and paint, <laughs> like like new media artists always do. <laughs> I got a tickle at the idea of like starting that again i'm ready i'm ready to do some painting just to get me off freaking computer like i'm here too off i'm here too much because i'm attached to it like with a bungee cord because you know i've i've got a 42 inch screen i've got always the work in front of me that i am doing uh then on the other side of this screen is um something on netflix and in the middle is social media in a browser and that's how i live so I'm, I'm just darting back and forth. Like, um, I don't know how I get anything accomplished, but I actually do. <laughs> That's really funny. And like, um, when you said going to the park and painting, I don't know what this space has uh, melted my brain to the point where my first thought was, oh, you can show that in the metaverse and then do it digitally. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can scan it and turn sell it as an NFT. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Like, like, like this whole market is drunk our fucking brains. Really? It's like, what's going on now? Everything's a little box on objects or on foundation or on super rare. Like God. <laughs> you know, we we have limited our lives very much. You know, by by participating in this clusterfuck, uh, but it's it's still entertaining. I have a question. Okay. <laughs> I I'm I'm a collector on uh, Tezos. I also uh-huh. make NFTs, but I I quite often will see your your name on on work that I've collected is well. So it seems like you are collecting a lot of NFTs. And I'm wondering- Of course. I love, well, that's actually what I love about Tezos and the artists on here. I don't collect in Ethereum. Um, Mm. I can't afford to. I have to cash out my Ethereum the moment I get it because I can't. I haven't been able to cash out Tezos in a year and a half. 
So that's kind of scary. <laughs> you know, watch the watch the value go down in, in real numbers that I will be taxed on. It's terrifying. But um, that was the one thing I love about the Tezos ecosystem was the fact that artists were collecting other artists. And when artists are doing that, you're also guiding collectors that are new to collecting, are new to digital art, but are excited about it because, you know, they are looking at the work you actually are committing to, um, not just your work, but, you know, who do you like, whose work do you like, and, you know, pondering your taste. I mean, if you have one, it might be a, a, a pity purchase, but if you have, like, four or five of an artist's work, like, they pay attention. And so it's, we are educating in a way that, we didn't immediately recognize, but you know, it's, it's, I find it very funny that the only people who are identified as collectors are people who don't make art, but you know, just buy art. And I mean, that's absurd. There's like artists that have fabulous collections, just amazing work. Um, and like, but that doesn't seem to get acknowledged when I think it's one of the most important things. Not to mean that it's like a, a like a, a Ponzi scheme, like, you know, a bunch of artists will just keep on buying each other's work and, you know, the pyramid. <laughs> oh, bro. It, 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 it's not that at all. It's like finding artists. Artists are collecting and holding on to stuff because it gives them pleasure. When I get offers, I get a, like, you know, a, a disgustingly tiny offer. I really, like on other people's work in my collection, I am enraged. <laughs> I am like, how dare you? You know, how do you do the NFT? How fucking dare you, you cheap prick? <laughs> <laughs> and even when I like I get good offers on like works that I just I'm other people's works that I'm so madly in love with it's like there is no way I am letting this go for under 500 tits <laughs> fuck you I don't care if I only paid three tits for it it's too good <laughs> so I'm, I, I'm really big into like big evaluations like it doesn't it's like the value like my value for the work um mixed with you know oh, i would be nice to get some extra bucks from this but it, it i i don't want i'm not into flipping and i'm not into insulting the artists who i've purchased by you know selling their work reselling it at a discount i, I does a horrible disservice mm -hmm. to them when like you know especially if they're younger and, and building up their market so yeah collecting collect for artists to collect really 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 matters and um you know in, in the in, you know trad world we just, we just trade like you know physical pieces all the time and um at least here we've got this funny money <laughs> we have phony money to spend on each other's art and yeah it's great are you it would be i was wondering if you have you thought about um you know, I totally agree with the Tezos ecosystem, and I just jumped right in because it's like you can be an artist, you can be a collector, um, and you, I think the Akira, that was what my next question was going, was whether or not you have any plans for, you know, organizing an exhibition of uh, something from your collection. Um, at this point, no. I've, I've always, though I've got like mm. lots of curations on my CV, I've always been a reluctant curator. Um, it's a ton of work. It, it takes a lot of thought. And there are people who do it better than me. I, I, I can pitch an idea, you know, to a, another, to a curator um, and get them excited about it and, and get them excited about finding the artist that works with this idea. But I, I don't want any part of it. I don't want credit for it. Um, uh, I'm also in, in all the part of curation when it was just on the blog was I was excited about the work and I wanted it to be disseminated, you know, like, you know, look at the people making art in Toronto, look at the people making art in small towns that are doing brilliant, exciting things. But, um, you know, in, for institutions, which I've done a few things for, um, I know when I'm asked to curate, I mean, I have to ask my first question is, is there an artist fee? 
And I feel like it's my responsibility as a curator when dealing with any institution that gets funding that, you know, you impose that. They, there should be an artist fee. Um, as far as people curating my work in metaverses, it's like, go for it. I don't care. Have fun. Like, it's that. Okay. So it's that you purchased it. Enjoy it. Like, you know, like I, 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 mean, I, I, I have coffee, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you said that because your work is up in our little, you know, pavilion area at Loop. So, whew, oh, okay. No, 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 like, well, no, it's like, collect, you, know, you collect something, you want people to see it, you want to show it. Like, <laughs> it's like yes, now you have to burn it. You just, just, just keep, like, you know, the, the, the metadata. <laughs> like, come on. Yeah, yeah. I I love I love your sense of humor about all of this because I feel like uh, sometimes these um these conversations about things like you know putting the artwork in the metaverse or you know buying you know NFTs and maybe selling them later or something like that it gets so political and charged and crazy. It's so nice to have a good laugh about it. <laughs> well, people get butt hurt so easily. I mean, I'm, and that is, you know, hilarious to me. And as far as like, you know, artists, um, collectors and secondary markets, I really think it's good for artists that I collect to, to, to get them a good secondary market if possible. Hmm. Like it, it makes them happy. It would make, makes me happy, makes them happy. Um, it's, if someone else was asking me about like, you know, like in this, in this, you know, like bearish market, like what, um, how, how do you cope with it? And it's like, well, I'm not happy, but you know, I can, you know, take a hundred tiz and make a whole bunch of other people, other artists happy. So, you know, mm. fine. Okay. Someone will be happy. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. So I, it's, I, I'm far more easygoing about these ginormous issues <laughs> around these passionate, passionate issues where, you know, the sissy fights that erupt around it are so hilarious to me. So much fun. I yeah, definitely. I, I, somebody said something to me about it the other day and I said, you know, I've, as a person that's loved a lot of this art, you know, that has been on the internet for so long, I had no way of buying the work. You know, I had no way of like, not even buying, I had no way of giving the artist money for freely entertaining me for years. In yeah. <laughs> well, that's something one almost ever hears. Uh, <laughs> how can I give you money? Because <laughs> you've given me, I mean, you've given me so much to think about and talk about and look at, you know? And so like when I first, at first, of course, I wasn't into NFTs. And then I thought, oh, my gosh, I can just sort of pick out my favorite artists from, you know, the 90s to present, see if they're doing NFTs, and then buy little NFTs from them if I can afford them. And why not? Yeah, yeah. No, 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 we love it. Um, and, and I've been fortunate because I have two galleries. I have Kalani for transfer, and I have um, um, Wolf uh, Lizer, uh for in Dam in in Berlin and they're both totally supportive of the NFTs. They, they, they think it's great for artists. Mm. Um, I, you know, and also I do not take work from a gallery's um, inventory and, you know, put it, you know, mint it as an NFT and, and leave them behind, you know, in the dust mm -hmm. uh, for whatever reason, because I, they, especially Kalani has put so much effort and expense and support into my career and i want her to keep on being rewarded by it because like she's given me a lot a hell of a lot mm. and you no know, i'm very grateful i'm i'm grateful to, like you know all these like people have supported me in some way in my career um and you know i i want other people to value that value them as well for that so you know i'll sing their praises <laughs> So excited. I'm going to go see her tonight. She's doing something at Oolight. So I'm uh, very excited to uh, go see it. It's all about AI. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, like, 
she has her fingers in a lot of pies. She's insanely energetic. Um, she's very generous with her resources, and she's great at find like at finding <laughs> at finding display equipment for free you know, for <laughs> periods of time. It's, it's she shows tries to show everything in the best way possible, mm. and like you know what better support could you ask for if, if, if you're working with technology, you know, is for someone who you know, wants it to be what you want it to be. So yeah, I'm lucky. Wow. <laughs> Any other questions? Cause like, yeah, other guys, come on, jump in. I'm turning my mic off. It's your, it's your deal. Should we, should we see if there's someone in the audience who'd like to get a question in before? Uh... Yeah. But they don't have to. I, I I never ask questions in audiences myself. Like, oh, you know, make an observation and DM later. But not, I've never been one to like think up a question. So I don't generally expect anyone to have a question for me. <laughs> if fair is fair. Um, but if there isn't like any questions, like I'm, you know, happy to get kind of release everyone from this prison of my ego <laughs> well if we don't is there anything else that you'd like to share with us before we this has been just absolutely fantastic order ah uh, god i mean just so many details and i mean you know sissy fights historic sissy fights going back so long that i would just love to dish on but yeah, it's just it's too much <laughs> at this point it's yeah there's, there's a lot to talk about but actually one thing i did it was a point i want to make because it's kind of interesting is that when if you're an older artist and you've got like some kind of established position like no people know who you are and curators don't run away from you um it's it's hard for other younger artists to realize that you know even like when you look at the those superstar artists from the 70s and you see like these images you know on on the akg website for instance in buffalo where a lot of media artists and performance artists are owning their craft and participating there like you see these pictures of these young beautiful people doing brilliant art the thing to remember is at the time no one cared no one gave a flying fuck so like when i go like i look through my you know, collection of stuff and people go, oh, wow, that's a way ahead of its time or whatever. It's like, yeah, because no one cared at the time. <laughs> so, you, know, you live a life full of art, you're going to find that a lot. And then something may click in the future and people will look back at it and go, oh my God, how did I miss this? But yeah, <laughs> you know, to live day, live day to day, um, you have to have low expectations that, you know, your ego or your heart will be fed properly. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, great. And we have uh, Santiago here who'd like to ask you a question, one. Okay, not a hard question, I hope. <laughs> Hi, Lorna. How are you? Oh, Bye, guys. Great. So I wanted to ask you, what's your two gold song for karaoke? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't understand. I didn't. I didn't hear the question. I have a hearing problem. I got not great. Why? What's I'm, your the song you would sing if you are in a karaoke or in any karaoke oh. party? <laughs> Fuck! No, there is no way. I do not sing. I do not perform. I do. I don't do that shit. Absolutely. <laughs> no matter how drunk you get me, you will not get me on that stage. So like, dream on, okay. but it ain't happening. <laughs> Okay, and I have my one, one more thing. I love your house. I love the pictures I've seen from inside your house, Lorna. Oh, thank you. know what? I love my house too. I'm like I'm I'm lucky I have one. Um, but you know, markets weren't like this before. I could a million years ago you could get a house. Um, but I love the place because I get I get a huge space and I have lots of guest rooms so i have i'm able to invite people like or if they're coming through toronto to stay at my house and 
you wouldn't believe how many random internet strangers <laughs> show up here. <laughs> and but no issues. Like I mean, it was like it was never a safety issue because like I had a hundred and seventy five pound dog that adored me, so you know, there was no, <laughs> no worries about my health or anything. Um, but it, it's it's kind of a pleasure to have like to be able to have like solitude, space, and time to like work on my art, you know, to chatter with people online, whatever. And I also have my life gets punctuated every so often with, you know, an influx of other people, mm -hmm. you know, sharing the space. And it, it, it's so much fun. Like it's, I'm living the way I want to live and I know I'm really lucky. I, I absolutely know that. Um, but thanks. I'm like, my house is full of plants and, dog hair still <laughs> dead dog hair and uh, oh, God. Yeah. I'll take more pictures <laughs> wow <clears throat> that well, was that have to be it yeah that, that was wonderful <laughs> yes that was wonderful <laughs> it's it's so nice to hear you oh it's fun it's, I mean I love to shoot my mouth off <laughs> I, I can't oblige I won't listen to this actually, you know, I'm not gonna, I'll just like cringe with embarrassment. Like if I don't listen to my voice, I don't look at in interviews. I, it's, it's, it's uncomfortable. Yeah, I agree with that. But thank you so much for um, being a wonderful, wonderful judge. Um, you're gonna love the work. I know we might have to drag you into the metaverse to see it or take screenshots. We'll take screenshots, okay? I would love that if you did because it's, I, I'm so reluctant. Well, you know, but you know, the image, for God's sake, yeah, I should go in and look because it's you know, a, it's they're, it's they're your crew. Like army. It's I, your I crew. Will be deploying them to a war zone soon, so yeah. They will break it down. Trust me. Uh, but, um, but yeah, thank you so much. And thank you so much to everybody listening. And uh, yeah, Cha, take it away. You're the official host. <laughs> the uh, yeah. three. Thank you so much, Laura. This has been fantastic. Really yes. appreciate you taking the time to come in. I had a riot. All right. Bye. Say hello to and Carla. Thanks, everybody. Have fun. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>